Hey, how's it going? Happy Saturday. How's everyone doing? Sorry for the delay right there. As you can see, probably in the uh, in the chat logs, I was checking my bot. So um, usually my bot's up. Well, it's not right now, and it's pretty <laughs> it's pretty funny that I'm actually going to talk about like my Kubernetes network and my Kubernetes cluster and how I have it architected. Uh, and yet something's not working, but I think I know what it is. So like, that's why the intro took a little bit longer. I ended up uh, committing, I ended up writing some code really quick and deploying it. So I don't know, I'll test in production. So it's rolling out now. Hopefully my bot will be up here in a little bit. I don't know, maybe in about five minutes. I think it, I, so, so I mean, you, you guys probably know if you've been around the channel for a while, I have full CI CD working um, uh, within my Kubernetes cluster. I, I mean, I use a combination of GitLab and, and, and a couple other things uh, to build my code and deploy it. And it deploys to my cluster that's in my basement, my Kubernetes cluster. Um, hey, real quick, skill point. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Reese, dude, thanks for the Reese uh, Prime three months. Thank you. One month streak. Dude, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Sorry, no lights. Uh, actually, here, I will manually flash the lights for you. I think I can. There we go. Manually flash the lights for a second. <laughs> Thank you for the sub. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Takano, dude, I'll keep the lights flashing. Why not? <laughs> Takano, dude, thanks so much. Thanks for the resub. Dude, 10 months. 10 months resubscribe. Dude, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Takano, how you doing, man? How's it going? Reese, how you doing? Dude, I missed that one too. Our, our, Ario Mayo. Hey, thanks for the sub prime sub. Dude, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'll just, let's just keep these lights going. <laughs> let's keep these. Wow. All right. I might as well keep it going. Wow. Hype train too. Wow. Thank you so much, man. I, I should, my bot should break more often. <laughs> Dude, thank you so much. Uh, cars, car size. Thank you so much as subscribed. Uh, Prime sub, thank you so much. Hype train, level one complete already. Wow, I just got started. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Oh, I need to iron this shirt. Oh, man, I'm like, hype train and my shirt's all wrinkly. <laughs> but thank you so much. I, re I really appreciate it, really appreciate it. Um, all of you, I just want to make sure. Reese, Ario Mayo, Takano, car size, car seats. I'm going to go with that. Thank you so much for the, the sub and continued support for those that resubscribe. Really appreciate it. Um, Keep this going for a minute. Uh, let me see. Can I get it back to non-flash? All right. See the manual way. The manual way. So what I was saying is I I, I have a bot um, that runs this channel or, or is, is is a participant in this channel, I should say, um, and uh, it was working. And uh, it's it's I figured it out. It's only the Twitch piece. And so I was like, okay, I'm gonna let my intro screen roll one more time. If I can write this code really quick to fix it. Um, uh, I'm gonna push it up, and so that's what I did. I, I wrote the code, committed it, pushed it up, tagged it. It's rolling out now. Usually, so I have CI and CD um, between GitLab and my Kubernetes cluster, and so now it's it's rolling out now. So in about four or five minutes, I think, in in about five minutes, I can get code into production, my home production, uh, which is my Kubernetes service, which is a brand new cluster. So there's a lot of things that uh, that need to go right right now uh, that I've, I've never tested like live like this. And uh, so, like I was saying, like today, um, you know, I kind of wanted to talk through some of the changes I made to my Kubernetes cluster. A lot of folks have been asking, you know, uh, about about my new new kind of architecture because I've been I've been hinting that I, I've been working on a new architecture. Um, and uh, so I had some problems, as, as you probably saw in the video today. I had some problems with my Kubernetes cluster. It uh, it's 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 probably my own doing. But I thought, you know what, I want HA databases. And so as you guys know, or may or may not know, I've used uh, uh, K3S with a combination of MySQL uh, for my databases. And so the MySQL way is fantastic. Don't get me wrong. Like nothing I say from here on out has anything to do with an external database version of K3S because it, it, it works fantastic. Um, but it's it's not HA unless you have a um, uh, 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 replication and you have an HA database. If, if you get databases as a service from somewhere else that provides the HA service, done, done, easy. If you're running it at home, it's a little bit more challenging. And so I'm, you know, I, I'm not a database administrator, but uh, I play one at home, just like I play a lot of other things at home. So I was like, I got this, I got this. You know what, I'll set up replication uh, with MySQL uh, I'll, I'll, I'll join them to a cluster or at least replicate them. And there's a couple of ways you can replicate them. And I was like, I got this. And so I set it up and it started working. And I was like, yeah, that was easy. That was easy. Well, little did I know slowly over time, 
my databases were drifting and like syncing the wrong things with each other. You know, uh, on week one, I was like, hmm, why do I see old pods that shouldn't be there anymore? I was like, ah, maybe it's a fluke. Maybe it's a bug with Rancher. You know, blame it on everything but yourself first. So then week two, I was like, hold on. There are nodes in my cluster, according to Rancher, that aren't in my cluster anymore, according to Kube Control. And that's when I started to realize that something was definitely wrong. And so, you know, over the last like two, three weeks, I've just been, uh, just been hot fixing, just like, okay, restore my database back to a good point, fix some services. Um, and that worked okay. But then all of a sudden, like my ingresses started disappearing, um, because new ones weren't getting created when I would deploy new services with Rancher. And I was like, yeah, this isn't good. This is not good at all. And so, so then I was like, okay, I, I'm done hot fixing. I'm done like patching and like doing all this monkey patching myself. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I, 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 I want less ops at home, you know, less ops, the, the least, you know, amount of operational stuff I have to do the better. And so Kubernetes, you know, is, is great at that. It'll take care of stuff for you. Dead pods, deployments, rollouts, scale up, scale down, horizontal scaling, whatever. And so I was like, okay, I'm done with this. I'm, I'm so done. Let me, let me take a step back, make sure my services are running and uh, think about this. And so, you know, over the last, um, last, it, it was the last week, I really took a step back and thought about it and thought about, okay, what, what, what would, you know, a next version of my cluster look like, you know, what would it look like? Would it look the same? You know, and I, and I, I, I removed all, all assumptions that I had and all preconceived ideas of about what it should be like, or even what I've even done in the past or what I've taught in the past. Hey, PC geek, dude, how's it going, man? How you doing? Good to see you, dude. Dude, thank you so much. Resub tier one, seven months, bot's still not working. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I'm blaming it on, uh, I'm blaming it on, uh, the deployment just being a little bit slower, but dude, PC geek, uh, thanks Tim for all the, uh, thanks Tim for all that you do and for the community. Dude, thank you so much. I appreciate what you do, man. Dude, every day, every day, PC geeks, in, in, in Discord, helping out, lending a hand, always has a positive attitude. Uh, thank you so much, dude. Really appreciate it. Uh, appreciate all you do, too, man. Really appreciate it. Dude, Ilude, what's up, man? Speaking of mods, dude, Ilude, too, man. Dude, tier one, seven months, dude, seven months streak. Dude, thank you guys so much. Really appreciate it. Ilude, another moderator, Discord. Uh, fantastic wealth of knowledge um, and, 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 and Docker and a lot of stuff, uh, g great help to the community too, but both of you guys do. Thank you so much. Thanks for the continued support. I appreciate it. Um, so, um, so I, so I, I, I thought about like, what does, what would my Kubernetes cluster be if I didn't really, you know, um, already have ideas of what it should be. And I was like, okay, do, do I need Rancher? I even, I even put Rancher on the table, on the chopping block. I was like, do I want Rancher? <laughs> you know, cause I was starting all over from scratch. I mean, I had my services, I knew what, how they should run. So I, I, I had a lot of manifest for, um, uh, a lot of my deployments and I knew how that should work. But I was like, what's going to orchestrate Kubernetes? Do I need an orchestrator for Kubernetes? Is it going to be Portainer? Is it going to be Rancher? And I, I start from the beginning. And then I and then I started to think about, okay, well, you know, kube control commands aren't that great. Oh, 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 yeah. So I, I, I'm, I'm pretty familiar with kube control. I can deploy my whole entire cluster with kube control commands for the most part. I have manifest now for a lot of things. So, you know, all I have to do is go into one folder and say kube control deploy, you know, all my secrets all my deployments, all my pods, all my uh, persistent storage volumes, you know, a couple of Helm commands and I can have my, my cluster up and going. I'm oversimplifying, but it's, it's almost to that point. Probably take me 45 minutes, you know, of just, you know, verifying. And uh, so then I was like, hmm, you know, I don't uh, like, um, you know, I, I kind of want a little more visibility into my cluster. I want to, you know, kind of be able, I want a UI at some point. I'm not going to run kube control commands from my phone when I'm on the run. <laughs> you know, I could VPN in and sure get a, get a client and, uh, you know, run my kube control commands and make sure everything's working. But I wanted a dashboard and that's when I started looking at a Kubernetes dashboard and don't get me wrong. That's fantastic. It's fantastic. Um, but, you know, I wanted something where I didn't have to, uh, 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 the way it's set up right now, I should say this, is that it basically, when you run the Kubernetes dashboard, you're running it in God mode. You're running it as basically root because you have to use a token that has access to everything in Kubernetes. So I was like, I really don't want that hanging out all the time. And then I thought about, well, I could just spin it up 
and you know, uh, coupe control, you know, port forward, the ports back to me, but I'm like, well, I can't do that on mobile. Um, and then that's when, that's when orchestrators came back on the, on the, uh, on the docket or on the table where I was like, okay, well, they're not off the table. I don't know the chopping block. Do they stay on the table when they're, I don't, I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> then I was like, okay, um, I think I'm going to go with Rancher again because I, you know, I'm a huge fan of Rancher and I built up this knowledge of Rancher and I, I, I enjoy it. I really do. But then it was like, okay, now I'm gonna, you know, what, how am I gonna, how am I gonna build my Kubernetes cluster? Am I gonna, am I gonna go? And I'll, I'll show you some stuff here in a little bit. We're gonna map some stuff out. I'm gonna show you how it works. Um, you know, I started thinking about, um, you know, uh, uh, do I, do I use K3S again? Do I use RKE? Do I use KD, K3D? You know, how, how do I, how do I build this? You know, if I'm, I'm gonna do it from scratch. And then do I take the Rancher recommended approach where Rancher has its own cluster, <laughs> you know? These are all things that were on the table. And so, um, you know, I, these are things I had to seriously consider. Um, and, uh, and, and I, I think I found something that's, that's, that's pretty stable. Um, and, and, and to take it even a little bit further, you know, I, you know, my SQL is still on the chopping block too. You know, am I going to use an external database be, be, uh, you know, versus, um, an internal database like, uh, you know, hosted or internal at CD, um, because, Way back when I did this for the first time, you know, uh, etcd wasn't even um, on the, it wasn't even available, you know. Uh, the MySQL version was still alpha, you know, and now that's deprecated, uh, except for single nodes, I think they say. And and now it's, you know, now it's um, embedded at, at CD is now n no longer alpha, it's, it's fully supported. So I'm like, okay, hmm, maybe I can do this. So anyways, before we get into that real quick, I want to read comments. I want to, I, I want to read comments and I'll dive in. I'll show you my cluster. I'll show you how, things, how I have things arranged. Um, and we'll kind of diagram. You can help me diagram. Poke holes at my cluster. I, I already know where, you know, pieces that aren't fault tolerant. But I, I'd love to hear your feedback too. So I'm going to go through these really quick. Um, just because you wrote them. So I, I want to make sure I address them. Takano, you're here first. How's it going? How you doing, man? JMO, <laughs> Reese. Hey, you were, you were almost first. You were almost first. Farhan, how's it going? Yellow. I like it. Yellow. <laughs> hey, hey, uh, Reese, you came back. Yeah, I did come back. Yeah. So, and, and a couple of people mentioned that on my YouTube videos today, like, hey, he's back. I'm like, wow, I didn't really notice that people noticed that I didn't post a video for a while. So I, I appreciate you noticing. I have been here on stream on Saturdays, um, but uh, videos had to kind of take a backseat for uh, all the things I got going on. And I mean, we're all busy, so no, no excuses. Um, but I, I did, um, I didn't have to put things on pause, uh, but they're now, now they're back on play, I guess. So is, is that how it works? Uh, just had to take care of a lot of stuff, home work, and then cluster stuff and a lot of other stuff going on. Plus it didn't feel well. So I was like, and you can kind of tell in my last video, it's, it's, it's not the normal me, but I was so drained, but I told myself, nope, I, I absolutely have to do this. Uh, it's the only way to get back on the horse is just to do it. And so, yeah, uh, Tigano got coin mech up, USB timer board and joysticks. Nice dude. Hopefully going to start finishing up this machine. Yeah. Nice. So Tigano's building a little, uh, uh, arcade game that he can plug money into when he wants to play video games, he, he can plug money into it and it's a good way to kind of save, <laughs> uh, dream traveling. Yo, what's up? How's it going? Uh, Tigano also thinking of buying a vending machine. <laughs> nice man. You're going all out. You're going all out. Uh, Sly Human, sup? What's up, man? Uh, <laughs> Toffian, how's it going? <laughs> Hopefully you're not working on that. Hopefully you're not working on that. That's not good. That's not good. Takano, I uh, already have a place where I'm thinking of putting it. Drinks only. Uh, drinks only, but it's only going to be uh, at a location of people who work out in the sun. Nice. So you, you're, I, oh, you're going to make money off this vending machine. I like it. I thought you meant just for home, for fun. Nice. Uh, Jorge, uh, Jorge, how's it going? Posada. Uh, I thought you might find that enjoyable. Didn't see the link, but I'll, I'll, I'll ping me in discord. Uh, the timer increase. Yeah, that's where I was trying to deploy my code. I don't even know if it's out there now. I don't even know if it's out there, but, um, you can try it. If not, I'll have to debug it later. So I do apologize. Um, so you probably can't change the lights until I fix that. But, uh, next time I should, I should have checked a little bit earlier, but that's the last thing I think about is my bot up. Cause most of the time the answer is yes. Um, intellectual play space. How's it going? Good to see you. Uh, Sigor, how's it going? What's new? Yeah. Whole lot new, whole lot new. We're going to talk about it here in a little bit. Uh, hype train subs. Thank you so much. Skill point. Uh, hi, I have no idea how long 
Yeah, you've been trying to catch me streaming. Hey, you, you caught me. Uh, Saturday at 3 is almost, uh, it's almost always going to be, this one's going to be available. Other ones will be available as, as I become available. It's just, it's getting real tough to do them at night too. And I think as soon as things start opening back up and, you know, work arrangements change, it might be even a little more difficult. I don't know how I did it a year ago. <laughs> um, but yeah. Yo, hey everyone. Good afternoon. Anywho, uh, holy mark, how's it going, dude? Uh, good afternoon. Who need a bot fire? Yeah, totally, totally, man. Uh, you can you can razz me about my bot. Like my code should be up and working in Kubernetes, especially like since this is my YouTube job. You know, <laughs> making sure services stay up. But uh, I'll figure it out. It, this is nothing to do with Kubernetes. This is my own code, and I think my token expired. And I was like, oh, I didn't write um, the best code to refresh my token, so I tried to force it manually. But anyways. Uh, Farhan, how's it going? Starting fresh with Kubernetes, what do you recommend? Uh, we're going to talk about that, so hang tight. Uh, intellectual Kates, uh, intellectual play space. Kates on a VM or on Proxmox uh, CTS? Um, I go with VMs, personally, but uh, if you can get it working in uh, a container like LXC, yeah, absolutely, go for it. Uh, it's, it's totally up to you. I, I personally do VMs because I can move them around really easily. Um, as you can on, uh, LXC containers. Yeah. Go, go with what works. I haven't done a, a container, uh, an LXC container, but, uh, I think some people have, I, yeah. Um, but I, I'm, I could be wrong. <laughs> uh, Restech trying to add a new node to RKE and every time RKE up, it doesn't work. I haven't done our plain old RKE stuff. Yeah. Uh, because etcd needs quorum and I only have two server nodes. Wow. You should have quorum with at least one, your first one, the one you init with should be and that's we'll talk about that here in a little bit uh techno tim why don't you use embedded etcd maybe i do hang tight <laughs> we'll talk about it uh this username is this username is inexistent it is existent now because you grabbed it hey how's it going um pc geek dude thanks again i lude thanks again uh Ario, mayo choo choo yeah you guys got the train <laughs> pc geek <John. laughs> hey johnny enough hairdo day yeah i uh my hair is a little tall so my my wife cut it uh just a little bit ago uh i made it a little bit tall and curly um we we, we have something to do uh, a little bit later today we're gonna hang out with friends it's like 60 something and sunny so we're gonna go to a little cookout here in a little bit um and so i thought i'll, I'll go with hair uh <laughs> Uh, it's it's funny because I last time I saw most people I didn't have hair I just always shaved it off so it's it's funny to see people's reaction when I walk in but yeah uh, uh, yeah uh, Sigor uh, best Discord around by far hey I, I I agree I agree and it's it's the people who make it up it's the mods who make it happen it's the people who contribute content I totally agree I totally agree um, yeah uh, yeah I I totally agree uh, great Discord full of ton of help ton of help for sure. Um, Farhan, uh, I have started with your channel on Proxmox, but uh, all started starting fresh with Kubernetes. What do you recommend? We're getting there, Farhan. Hold in, hold in there. Uh, Ilud, Kube on Proxmox is always a good way to go. Then you can spin up another cluster and replace the first if you want to. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. Uh, PC Geek, Juice SSH, yeah. <laughs> I, I assume that's a mobile SSH client. I, sh I should check it out. Um, Reese, I use Kube Control quite a bit. Should I say, I, I've said Kube Control ever since I discovered it. I know a lot of people say kubectl, and I've already talked about that many times, but uh, uh, Kube, Kube Control a bit, and I like having Rancher for new deployments. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I, I like Rancher for the, 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 the monitoring piece and stuff like that. Sig kill, dude, thanks for the sub, appreciate it. Sig, sig, yeah, sig kill, sig kill term. All right, all right, I like it. Uh, has subscribed. Prime sub, thank you so much. Appreciate it. We're gonna jump in here and here in a second. Um, but yeah, Reese, I, I I totally agree. Um, I've uh, I, I I used tons of kube control commands, and then I when I switched to Rancher, I was like, I don't need kube control anymore. And now I I kind of like it only because it helps me um, deploy things really fast and helps me repeat it really fast. And I can version control and and commit uh, my manifest to source control, which helps me do it again later <laughs> or, you know, destroy it, tear it down, build it back up. But um, I love Rancher for the visibility I get and for the additional apps and stuff like that. And just to be able to just navigate around my my cluster, exec into pods, look at logs really easily. It's it's super fantastic. And um, anyways, I, I got some more stuff coming too. Uh, so uh, Reese, etcd is great. I, 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 I agree. I agree. Well, I'm giving stuff away. I'll show you. Uh, I agree. 
Uh, PC Geek, just got finance deal with my new RV done today. Nice, dude. Bunch of stuff needed for uh, needed for it came too, including portable dump tank. <laughs> nice, dude. Nice. Yeah, you bought an RV. It looks awesome, dude. I I'm super jelly, man. When I see it, I'm just like, maybe I need one. I mean, I, I I'm, you know, yeah, I, th I, I think at some point I, I would love to because uh, we have dogs too. And so when we travel, it's like, uh, I got to leave the dogs somewhere. I'd love to bring them with. Uh, and that would that would give us the ability to. Uh, but yeah, it looks awesome, man. I'm excited for you. Arrow Mail. Hi, can you tell me which ingress do you prefer? Rancher ingress or traffic ingress route? I'm following your documentation for GitHub 2, 3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which should I choose? I'm looking for a simple way to expose my services. Yeah, so um, real quick, and I'll, I'll talk about this here in my diagram. You know, I, I used... Um, I, I used to use Rancher Ingress um, until I started using K3S and then, um, you know, which ships with a different version of, of traffic. So then I end up disabling the load balancer and the Ingress from K3S and then bringing my own traffic. And then on top of that, just recently, I switched to Ingress route. And it kind of seems like I'm going backwards um, because, you know, uh, uh, traffic Ingress, if you create one, it'll... it'll um, do some stuff for you automatically, but with ingra ingress route, it's more declarative. Like you have to define your routes per route. Um, but I kind of like that. I kind of like that because, you know, anytime I spin up a new service, I have three pieces I need to deploy. It's, it's going to be my, well, at least three. Uh, well, uh, not at least three. If I have a service that needs to be exposed, um, or needs an ingress, I'll say that I need at least three, you know, it's going to be, uh, uh, my service, uh, my deployment, and then my ingress. And I kind of like that. Um, and, and maybe, you know, it, 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 it see, that was one of the first features that they supported, but I, you know, it's, it's a lot easier for me to know that something is exposed if I deploy that too, rather than playing the game of, you know, Hey, I deployed this thing with an ingress. Um, is it, is it alive? I mean, I could do the coop control stuff to go and check and stuff like that. Um, but either way, I, I think, the ingress route is not the more modern approach that traffic is going after. Just a plain old ingress is is the is the way they want you to do it, or, or the way they support now. I I've kind of you know I, I've done both. I I'm settling on ingress route for now. Um, changing it later is is super easy. Um, but I you know I I just wanted to be able to bundle all of my manifests together and say here's everything I need to deploy this website. Boom, it's it's right there in my Kubernetes folder. Um, Lots of comments. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna get caught up real quick, and then I'm gonna show you my cluster, and we're gonna talk about some stuff, and I'm gonna talk about some of the I guess reasons why I made these choices. And you, you feel free to poke holes at at choices I made, because uh, you know, like I said, I thought about it for a long time, but then I implemented it really fast. So I rebuilt my whole entire cluster in about six hours, seven hours, I think, one day. It was uh, it was Monday actually, um, and so I did it. I, I had the day off, and I was like. Today's the day. <laughs> so anyways, um, Sigor, Takano, you just need a soft serve machine <laughs> to, to round out the mix. Yeah, he does. Yeah, an ice cream, yeah, ice cream machine for sure. Reese, I wasted my money uh, to test for Tim. Oh, dude. <laughs> yeah, my, I, I'll figure out my bot. I, I would drill into it now, but that's boring stuff. It's boring stuff. And I know it's it's, it's code I wrote or my tokens or, or something's going on. Uh, so I'll, I'll figure it out. So I do, I do apologize. I should check that stuff earlier. Um, to kind of, yeah, so the arcade machine is a home project, um, which no money will be made on it. The vending machine will be used for profit. I like it. I like it. Farhan, I just spinned up TrueNAS scale on v uh, VM on Proxmox minutes ago, but I didn't have similar drives to make a ZFS pool. Yeah, you're going to want that. You're going to want that. Uh, Restech, uh, but if you don't have three server nodes, you don't have HA. Yeah, that's absolutely. It's one of the things. It's one of the things uh, that uh, it's, it's, I guess, one of the cons. I don't know if that's a pro or con. For me, it's a, it's a con. It's just one more machine to worry about. Uh, Takano, 96 degrees here. Yeah, it's, it's warm. I think you're in the southwest. So, ooh, that's, that's too warm for me. I, I mean, even like I think we're going to have mid-70s uh, next week here in Minnesota, in Minneapolis, and I'm kind of like, uh, I'm not ready for that yet. You know, I, I enjoy 50s and 60s. I, I, I thoroughly enjoy them. I wish I had more 50s and 60s in my life because here it's negative 20 to 90 and humid, you know, it's, um, our, our in-between seasons are, are, are short. So spring and, and fall are really short here. Cause it goes straight from, <laughs> it feels like almost winter to summer. 
get a you, you know we get about a month of like the most perfect weather ever and then the other months are kind of like oh i don't know if i want to go outside <laughs> um so let me see uh give your points back didn't work reese i'll see what i can do i'll see what i can do i i apologize yeah my bots whatever it's not working i'll see what i can do i don't i don't know if i can refund points but if if i can in the in the twitch manager today i'll refund any points that people spent today i need to write a note to myself too because I, i've never had to do that because my bot is is definitely down um refund points uh remind me i just should say hey google remind me at 10 o'clock tonight because that's when i take care of business um so let's see uh Takano, uh when we talked to the owner they wanted two machines one of them for the north side one for the south side dairy farm nice uh cube nav is apparently a mobile desktop case management app disclaimer i have not tried it <laughs> yeah the hottest it's been here in arizona is 121 degrees Ooh wee ooh wee that's hot um yeah, so yeah, I, 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 uh, I, I've tried a lot of other Kubernetes. I've tried a lot of other Kubernetes, like dashboards. I, I started to look, and this was part of my journey too. Um, I'll just switch over to here now. I'll show you my desktop. You, you guys are going to see a little bit behind the scenes. I'll try not to show things that like give away. Uh, I mean, I don't have anything that's super. Yeah, here's me again. Um, I, I'm not used to pressing that button. <laughs> um, but I, you know, I don't have too many secrets. So I, you know, I, I share a lot of stuff, a lot of the stuff, a lot of my videos too, are, I just do it in production. Cause I don't have a ton of secrets. Um, Hey, read, write, read, write, execute, Rob rating 45, dude. Thank you, man, dude. Thank you so much. Thanks for the, uh, thanks for the raid, big raid, dude. Thank you so much. I uh, appreciate it, man. How's it going? How's it going? Good to see you, dude. I uh, appreciate it. Um, hope you're doing well. Hope your stream is good. Welcome everyone that just came from, uh, I think it's read, write, execute, Rob. I'm going to go with Rob. How's it going, man? Uh, hope you enjoyed the stream. Um, today, uh, you know, usually we, we talk about all kinds of tech here. A lot of home lab stuff. A lot of home lab stuff. People like to build things and self-host things at home and build servers and build uh, all kinds of services at home. One of those services is, is some people enjoy or don't enjoy is, is Kubernetes. Uh, it's it's big. It's complicated. It's, it's sometimes messy. But uh, when you get it right, it's, it's pretty awesome. Over the last couple of weeks, I did not get it right. <laughs> well, I got it right for about a year. And then the last couple of weeks, I tried to make one of my database HA, uh, uh, which then I had a lot of drift and I destroyed my cluster uh, for, for, for lack of a better term. And so slowly over time, my databases were getting out of sync and um, which in fact was then um, affecting my cluster because my cluster depended on the external database um, for its state. And so that's that's one of the, the, the I don't know if it's a pro or con, but one of the differences, if you use K3S with an external database, that becomes, that becomes your source of state. He's like your one. He's your one for quorum. If nothing's up, your database is up. As soon as one comes up, it's like, oh, you're, you're, you know, you're in charge right now. The database always, always maintains that state. And so when you switch over uh, to another uh, internal database, here's my, here's, this is my live cluster right now. So when you switch over to a different um, type of database, like an internal etcd uh, cluster, now the database is hosted on each one of those nodes. And so I'll, I'll show you really quick. Uh, so uh, which cluster is this? You guys are really going behind the curtains now. Um, so that's kind of what I decided I, I kind of wanted in, in my, my future cluster. Like I, I, I had to make a, a quick decision, but I had molded this over uh, for many weeks in my head. And you know, a lot of people have asked me, and, and should I do it embedded at CD? And I was like, yeah, why not? But you know, I, I, you know, I, I always appreciate when someone has you know, personal experience or a personal recommendation or, or has had experience with that. And I, I didn't, I wasn't able to give people any kind of recommendation or uh, thoughts or any kind of feedback on what that looks like. So I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to do this. And, and Rancher seems to, they do that by default now. So if you don't specify anything, you're getting it embedded at CD, which is pretty cool. So embedded at CD um, is a database that's housed on uh, uh, within every single node that you have. Right, and so every single node has a copy of this database. And I, in Discord, I listed some pros and cons. Um, but um, one, uh, you know, I'll list some of the, I guess, cons first. Uh, and they're not really cons; just things to be aware of. You know, you need at least three nodes. Um, well, dang, yeah, I'll, I'll go with three. I mean, one, one would win. But you need at least three nodes. You know, those nodes um, now that they're housing a database and they all have a copy of the database, they need to, you know, need a little bit more RAM now. 
and now they need a little bit more disk space and they need to be on, you know, faster, I'll say faster hard drives um, than, than what you would traditionally need for Kubernetes. Um, and then there's gonna be a little bit more IO and that go, plays into the, the disk drives while they need to be a little bit more performant. Um, and there's gonna be uh, a little bit more network traffic too, cause they're all talking to each other. Not that they didn't before, but now they're not talking to the database. And so if you think about it, like at first I was like, yeah, embedded etcd sounds like the perfect solution for Raspberry Pi. Seems like a perfect solution. Yeah, why edge, edge cluster, why would you not want this? You know, um, but you actually don't want that <laughs> on a Raspberry Pi, unless you have something better than a micro SD there, because it's, it's, they're super chatty. They're doing diffs. They're uh, getting updates um, uh, to their database. They're sending updates to uh, the, the the master in this in this cluster, whoever the 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 whoever's leading, I guess, um, quorum, the elected leader, I guess I should say is probably a better term. So um, so probably not a great idea for for Raspberry Pis unless you have SSDs unless you're like going all out like Jeff Gearling you know if you're on the Jeff Gearling boat and you're and you're totally putting SSDs on your on your uh, Raspberry Pis absolutely this would be fantastic if you're a micro SD person in Raspberry Pi um, the 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 role of server for that is probably not a good idea role of agent totally fine role of agent totally fine hey. Uh, etcd is expensive, even on big iron Kate's clusters run into problems um, with etcd perf. There's a concern that CRDs will make it worse. Ooh, interesting, interesting. Good to know, good to know. Uh, dude, thanks for the bits, Pair, Pair, Paired Lund. Uh, thank you for guiding me in the first step in the Kubernetes world. Hey, no problem at all. Thank you so much. Thanks for thanks for being here. Thanks for the bits. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, thanks for thanks for stopping in too. What about NFS connected NAS for the pies? Uh, possibly, possibly. But you got to think like, you know, those databases, um, I mean, if those pies could communicate in a relatively, um, well, let's think about this. You know, what's, what's you know, um, the, the, those databases need to be able to perform lots of transactions really fast. And so local write is going to be the fastest. And then on top of that, local write, local read write. Um, you know, on SSD is going to be even faster. And so you can, you can, you know, you can bundle everything on local read, write into any type of drive that's connected to there, physically connected to there. Once you start going over the network, I'm not sure. I'm not sure you, you might, uh, your mileage may vary. So I haven't done it. So anyways, uh, so then I started thinking about, okay, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go embed it at CD, you know, and, uh, uh, Quick tip two, I'll have all of this, once I document this, I'll have all of this documented and I will have all the commands so you can do it yourself too. So I ended up switching to embedded at CD. I was like, okay, well, you know what? I'm gonna go embedded at CD, let's go for this. Let's do this because I don't wanna have to th think about how I'm gonna make my uh, um, uh, database HA again. And so what I ended up doing was creating my initial cluster. So if you're using, if you're using Rancher, you know, Rancher likes to be installed on an existing Kubernetes cluster. So if you're using uh, a single node, this does not apply. Um, but if you're using, you know, anything more than a, anything other than a single node, you need a Kubernetes cluster first. And so that's what I did. I was like, okay, well, let's do K3S. Let's spin up three servers. And so if you look at, uh, oh, I am, am I on the right one? I'm like, wow, I'm like, am I looking at the right thing? It's, 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 it's I, I just made a video on the new dashboard and I, you think I'd know this. Um, so anyways, um, so this is, this is my new cluster. Uh, so this is my new, uh, I have two clusters if you didn't, didn't notice there. Uh, this is my new Kubernetes cluster. And so my new Kubernetes cluster, the first one I bootstrapped was based on K3S. And so on K3S, I initialized one with that CD and then I initialized two more with that CD pointed them back at the first one. Again, I'll have all these commands later. And then after that, I joined additional agents to this cluster. And because, because Rancher does recommend that your, uh, it, it runs on its own cluster. And I know people have said to me this lots of times, like, you know, should we really install stuff on the local cluster or should we have its own separate cluster? You know, I've been in the camp for a long time and I still am that like, I didn't want to have six additional servers just to run Rancher. You know, I, I get it if you're in a, if this is a production environment, a high use production environment, you, you, you probably should. Um, 
you know, at, at home, should you, uh, I'm, you know, that's, that's debatable. And so for a long time I, I ran it without, but I was like, you know what? And when people ask me this question, like, what's the difference? Um, you know, I want to have an answer for it. So I was like, I, you know, I, I have some resources laying around. I have a, I have a couple of cores I could use to do this. So I figured I'd go the best practice route as far as I could go with Rancher and Kubernetes. So that like, then, you know, I, I can say that I've done it and I understand it. So when people ask questions, at least I'm a little bit informed. Hey, thank you so much. Tech Freak 2. Dude, thanks for the bits. Appreciate it. Uh, hello, Tim. Just wanted to say hey and love your videos. Thank you. Uh, keep up the awesomeness, dude. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see. Uh, 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 PC Geek, you could run uh, Rancher and Docker, right? And have it manage a K3S cluster? Yeah, absolutely. You can. Yeah, yeah. Good call. Good call. You could run the Rancher, the Docker version of Rancher, and then spin up your existing cluster from there. So yeah, good call, PC Geek. You could, you could, you could uh, definitely. So uh, a lot of Legos here, and you can build, you know, a lot of building blocks. And that's that's a really good one. That's a really good call out. Is that if you didn't want um, an HA Rancher cluster, um, only the Rancher cluster, you could use the Docker version to spin that up. Only run Rancher on that cluster, the, uh, and then create a new cluster uh, uh, of uh, um, uh, that is HA. And so, and 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 that's something I learned too, and something I've I've kind of known is that like um, to 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 have Rancher be HA for the most part, Rancher itself, the service, all you need is a cluster that's HA, and then Rancher automatically becomes HA because it's running where it needs to run. Um, you know, it's, it, it has ingresses, it can bounce around and, and, and do all the things that Kubernetes is good at doing. And Rancher is, is pretty good at doing too. Um, so yeah, yeah, absolutely. Good point. Good point. Uh, PC geek, you could have ran a Docker version of Rancher installed and then create a new cluster. That's totally HA. And then just have, you know, one node, uh, single node Rancher install, and then have an HA cluster. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Good, good point. Um, and so, so my, my cluster, I ended up spinning up, you know, three servers, three agents, uh, and then joining them and creating this cluster. Once I had this cluster created, I ended up then um, installing uh, Rancher on top of it. And so, you know, uh, I was, it was a little bit confusing because they, they don't really, you know, they, they, uh, there's not a ton of guidance uh, on what you do after that, you know. Because uh, because because you can do a lot of different things uh, uh, with Rancher and Kubernetes. So that's so so that's what I ended up doing was creating my cluster, installing Rancher on it, and then I was like, okay, well, where where do where do all my user workloads go, right? Because I want to be able to separate uh, my Rancher cluster from my user cluster. So I'm gonna that's the terminology I'm gonna use. Rancher cluster is the one called local. User cluster is my own stuff and what, what, you know, and, and everything that I'm going to run, that's has nothing to do with rancher. And so if you see here, the, this is my, my rancher cluster, the one called local, uh, Aku, these are all three. Uh, these are my etcd host and you can see it right here at CD. Um, and then these ones called Archie are my, my agents. So the three agents that are going to run the rancher workloads what are the rancher workloads pretty much only rancher but that's okay I, I i'm like you know i'm gonna go i'm gonna do what rancher says and create my own uh network for it and there's some benefits to it too um so once this was installed then i was like okay well how do i you know how do i create my next cluster let's switch over to the cluster manager i'm, I'm gonna try to not to give too many secrets away but this is probably what you guys are are seeing so now you have your rancher cluster um, you know, how do you create a new cluster? It's, it's, it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy. So I went into the new cluster area, uh, clusters, oh, global, add a cluster. And then, uh, you know, so this is going to be my user cluster. All, you know, all I had to do, this, this took me a little bit to figure out and I, I won't go into it. I tried to reuse some nodes and yeah, anyways. Um, so I, you end up basically just going in and creating your new cluster, my new cluster, you know, whatever you want to name it. Uh, if I can spell or type, I know how to spell it's typing. That's the, the tough one. Uh, and I think these need to be hyphenated. Who knows? Anyways. Uh, but then you have kind of the same choices for your new cluster, right? You have the same choices and you need the same, uh, you need the same roles for your new cluster. And what are those roles? Well, you're going to need, you know, you're going to need uh, Kubernetes control plane, you're going to need a database, which will be etcd, uh, and then you're going to need some workers. And so that's kind of what this, 
Cluster name, I knew it, I knew it. And it has to be hyphenated, I know why, because this is YAML behind the scenes. So I, I should know that, everything's YAML. This is just a form to fill out YAML. Um, but you know, what, what we end up doing then is, um, uh, we end up, oh, I, I pressed back. Anyways, uh, we end up choosing uh, roles for this. Hello from Shakopee, all right, you're not too far away. How's it going? Hello from Minneapolis. Um, on, on your new cluster, I just totally went outside of here. Um, on, here's the command. On your new cluster, you're going to have to choose these, these same kind of roles. And so the first thing I did was actually uh, uh, create um, my, my, my servers for my new cluster, um, all with etcd and control plane. So I created three of those. And then I did the same thing for the worker nodes. And so this command right here, this command right here, all it's going to end up doing is um, really uh, 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 spin up a Docker container and spin up that cluster for you. It does take some time. Even on the high performing server that I have, it takes a little bit of time and, and, and five minutes is, is okay. So if you're wondering like, hey, uh, you know, I spun up these clusters, um, it's taking five minutes, what's going on? That's totally fine. And, you know, I did the same thing where I'm actually execing in, you know, I'm remoting in those machines, show me the Docker logs, looking at Docker logs. I'm like, what is it doing? Um, but it has a lot of built-in checks. And so I, I would recommend that when you do this, um, if you do spin up your second cluster, create one server and one worker node and let them be. Let them be for about five minutes. Um, and if, if you're really curious, you could remote into those machines, run Docker logs on those, and you'll see. You'll see the container spinning up. Um, there's some that check, there's some that wait, then it'll spin up. As soon as you see pre-polling pre -polling Kubernetes images, uh, you know you're in a good spot. Um, if you don't see that for 10 minutes, then you know that something might be wrong. Um, but anyways, so then you end up, let me delete this, then you end up getting your new cluster. Now I'm going to switch back to the, 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 the new cluster manager because, you know, because I just made a video on it and uh, it's pretty awesome. That would, that would really suck if I just deleted my existing cluster. That's the problem of doing things in production. Um, so anyways, um, so, so then once you have your two clusters spun up, uh, let's see, uh, software development in 2020, everything is YAML. So, so true. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Kate's is turning into us uh, all into YAML programmers. Yeah, for sure. Is YAML programmer equals true. Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. YAML, uh, you know, there's a, there's a, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I think, I think it was Kubernetes. It was the first time I'd I had to really, you know, enjoy YAML. <laughs> yeah, you got to get out your T-square, right? You got to get out your T-square and then you're all good because you just put your T-square on your monitor, you move it over every time you tab or space, whatever you use, won't talk about that, you know, then 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 you're good. Um, and and I highly recommend if you, if you are doing a ton of YAML and you use VS Code, uh, Red Hat has an awesome extension. It's a YAML validator. Um, as if, you know, as if you needed another validator, but, but, uh, Red Hat has a great extension on VS code. It's, it's a YAML validator. It will tell you, it'll actually inspect, um, those namespaces to see if you have the right properties, which can, uh, work sometimes. But the best part about it is it'll tell you if you have invalid YAML. Um, but, but if it understands those, if those manifests are public, like the types for it, it'll actually validate it too. So it's, it's pretty cool. Um, you have to use spaces in YAML, no tabs. All right, thank you. Uh, that's a good call. Uh, I personally don't like the new Cluster Explorer, but we'll probably get used to it. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's different. It's different. Um, the the reason why I like it is because it's a uh, it's a little more compact. When I'm looking at stuff, you know, I don't have to scroll as far. <laughs> I don't know, but I feel like I should be getting used to this mainly because uh, eventually the old one's going to go. You know, ranchers making their investments into this UI. They're supporting both. How long will the old UI be around? Who knows. Um, and I don't get me wrong. I love the old UI. It's, it's the first thing that drew me to Rancher because I was like, oh, finally, you know, uh, one, I get a UI to, to drive Kubernetes and two, it looks pretty good and it has dark mode. So, so anyways, so now I have two clusters, you know, I have my, my local cluster that's only running Rancher and all the Rancher related stuff. And then I have my new cluster, which is all of my user workloads. So this is where all of my user workloads stuff run. So uh, websites, web services, um, agents, you name it. All my stuff's running here. All, even my dynamic DNS stuff, you can see what I have 76 resources. I think about 40 or 50 of those are services. I have 36 deployments, but some of my things are services too. So, you know, and, and, and at the end of the day, it's not, um, it's, it, this is a lot more, 
uh, I, I have a lot of headroom, as you can see. I have a ton of headroom. You know, I, I could, uh, you know, use up to 440 pods. <laughs> I think I could probably do a little bit more than that. Um, but that's what you'll find with Kubernetes too. If you, if you start to build out nodes, like, you know, um, a lot of them aren't really busy, depending on the type of workload, right? If, it, if it's going to be something that's going to be uh, crunching data, processing data, converting video, anything like that, obviously, is going to use a lot. Uh, but for, you know, a lot of like enterprise workloads, if you think about those, a lot of those are, you know, web services or middleware services or lightweight websites, not going to use a ton. And that's, uh, it's, it's, it becomes really apparent when you have a dashboard like this. And so, you know, after I had this going and after I had it working, um, then came the challenge of, okay, now I have two clusters. Where do I install and configure anything? <laughs> you know, and what do I mean by anything? So, um, you guys, you guys probably know, um, that, you know, I, I, I use traffic, you know, I use metal LB, uh, you know, and, uh, and, and before that was pretty easy. When you have one cluster, you install it on the only cluster you have, you know, and, and how do you coop control? What does that look like? You have two clusters now where, how do, how do you make sure you don't do the right, the wrong thing to the right, wrong cluster or the right thing to the wrong cluster? And so those are things you'll have to, you know, kind of figure out too. Um, but I will say that if you're using Kube Control, you have a you have a, a easy way to switch contexts. And so now you'll have multiple contexts. I would show you my Kube Control, but it has all of my token secrets and everything. And you know, I I trust you all, but I don't trust anyone else who would watch this video later. I only trust the people watching this live. But later on, when it's a VOD, I don't trust them. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, but you know, just in general, I'm not going to show you my <laughs> my Kube Config file because it has my real tokens. Um, but if you do inspect your Kube config file, hey, uh, Matter, Matter Hacks, thanks for following, appreciate it. If you do inspect your Kube config file, you'll see now you have multiple servers and you'll have multiple clusters and it's actually pretty cool. And you'll see in there what your default context is. What, what's my default context? Is it my local cluster? You know, is, is it the, the, the rancher local cluster? Or is it my user cluster, which I, you know, called it very creatively cluster 01. It's, it's about as creative as it gets with cluster names. Some reason I give servers awesome names for clusters. I, I don't, I don't servers get great names. Um, and so, uh, oh, you have, uh, oh, you're using Kate's 20 plus. Could you do a dual stack IPv4 six with a new API? You, you, uh, you could do a dual stack IPv4 IPv6 using the new API. Interesting. Yeah, I haven't done I haven't done anything with IPv6. Uh, I, 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 I even honestly would have to look into what you're talking about because <laughs> I'm not too familiar with it. But yeah, that was one thing. Um, so while we're talking about the version of K3S, yes, I'm using the latest and greatest K3S. So I think it's uh, 120.4, 120 something. And, um, you know, this, this, this all was kind of serendipitous that it happened because just recently Rancher started supporting, you know, Kubernetes, uh, uh, 1.20, right. Uh, prior to it only supported Kubernetes 1.19, which is K3S.119. Um, and then K3S revved and then Rancher realized it didn't work. And then, so it broke Rancher. And then, so I, you know, I have things in documentation where I'm like, use the previous version. I should probably remove those now. So if you see that in GitHub, uh, feel free to um, uh, open a pull request to remove those uh, to, to specify the exact version. If not, it's in my notes, um, GitHub. So I don't forget, uh, bot points. Those are the three things I need to do. Um, and so, and so, yes, I, I'm running the latest, the latest K3S and I'm running the latest rancher, I think two, five, seven, it's, it's all working really, uh, really good. Uh, Hey, techno Tim, have you any more, uh, Slack bot work? I'm using your guide as we speak and looking into taking it a bit further. Um, nah, I haven't worked on my Slack bot in a while, Slack, Slack bot in a while. Uh, yeah, feel free to, yeah, if you, it's open source, if you, um, see something there and needs to be fixed or. Want to add some stuff to it? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think the only thing I do is patch it for security. <laughs> That's one thing I do do, even on my older repos. If I'm not adding features, I usually update node modules and just make sure, you know, anytime there's a depend about alert from GitHub, which is their security scanner, um, I, I usually take care of those pretty quickly. 
Uh, but yeah, thank you. Uh, PC Geek is still not working. Oh, oh my bot's not working. Oh, yeah, I love Dependabot. I do too. I do too. I, I wish I could spin up a Dependabot locally. <laughs> I wish I could have a self-hosted Dependabot. So it is so dependable. Yeah, that's right. So if you're not familiar with Dependabot, I was talking about it a little bit. It's basically a bot that watches your GitHub repos and will um, see, look at your manifest uh, for all of your dependencies and then check that list of dependencies against a known database of uh, security vulnerabilities and then automatically open a pull request on your GitHub repo. So all you need to do is say accept. <laughs> it's really cool. And uh, Microsoft ended up buying it, or GitHub, which Microsoft owns, you know, like they're buying up everything like Discord. Um, Ended up um, uh, GitHub bought Dependabot, so now it's you know part of GitHub, which is which is really awesome. It works on both public, I think, and private repos too, so it's it's really awesome. Um, and so if you have a GitHub repo, yeah, I uh, highly recommend add Dependabot. It'll scan your scan your repo and uh, open up pull requests for you for security vulnerabilities, so you don't have to keep track of them, and you just click merge. <laughs> you know, you'd want it to run your CI pipelines and stuff like that if you have those, but yeah, or you know, what, what, what work, work, I forget what they call them in GitHub. Um, but yeah, uh, so, so anyways, back to my, uh, real quick, Dependabot also tries to work out if the change will break your code, uh, based on other problems. That's really awesome. So they're using some machine learning. I like it. I like it. I like it. Um, uh, uh, jumping mush. Do you have any thoughts on monitoring Kubernetes clusters? I've got my cluster up thanks to your videos, but would like to know if it's healthy. Absolutely. Yeah. I have some real soon on that <laughs> real soon. So we'll talk, we'll talk about monitoring, uh, and alerting really, really soon. <laughs> so yeah, nailed it. Uh, but soon. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm, I'm in the same boat. Uh, you know, you know, if a tree falls in the woods, does it make a sound? That's kind of what it used to be like with my Kubernetes cluster. Cause you know, I, you arguably, you could say that about my bot right now. Uh, but yeah, you know, it, it's if you're looking at Kubernetes at a dashboard, you can kind of identify when things go wrong. But if you're not looking at it, how do you know? And so that's absolutely uh, where something like that comes into play. And I'll have something very soon, very soon on it, and sooner than you think. <laughs> uh, but yeah, monitoring and alerting coming real soon. And I think I hinted at that in today's video. So, so absolutely. Um, so this is kind of my newer, I know it, I know, you know, I, I, maybe I built it up, but this is kind of my newer infrastructure now. I'll, I'll even show you my Proxmox notes. I'll, we're going totally behind the scenes on everything that I have running. Uh, hopefully I don't have any, uh, they're all, they're all obfuscated. They're all weird names. Um, so the way that I have my Proxmox, uh, uh, cluster set up. So I do have a Proxmox cluster, um, is, is I have three nodes. And so I have three nodes now. Um, one node is just kind of temporary. It's my Intel NUC. I was doing some kind of exploratory work on, you know, what, is it, what does it mean to have an Intel NUC as a, a kind of a low powered Proxmox node? Works out pretty good. Um, but as you can see, um, you know, I'm starting to, starting to, to, to outgrow, I guess, um, you know, some of the, uh, some of the resources uh, that I think it's demanding. Um, wouldn't it be cool if there was an alert for bots not working? <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, LOL. Yeah, would be cool. I, I totally should. I, I, I know. And, and this could be solved with a health check. This could totally be solved with a health check. I just, uh, I didn't write a health check for that, for some of my personal stuff. I totally should. Um, but anyways, uh, so I'm, I'm only talking about this piece real quick because it, it's, it's kind of, um, it, it's kind of, good to uh, think about uh, where your nodes live within your cluster. If you just have one big server, this does not apply. Uh, but if you have multiple, you know, uh, if you have multiple server uh, nodes in your uh, uh, Proxmox cluster, or your hypervisor cluster, you kind of want to have one of each type of these nodes uh, living somewhere else. And so that's kind of what I've ended up doing was, you know, I have, you know, one of my, one of my, uh, um, what do I have one node? So I have three etcd nodes, uh, for, for my first cluster. One of those lives on each one of these servers. And then I have three workers, uh, for that first cluster, my rancher cluster, one of those nodes live on each of these servers. And the same goes for my user cluster as well. So on my user cluster, I have the same idea three etcd nodes with control plane so when i say etcd I, I i use it generically now to talk about just 
basically Kubernetes, you know, operations. So etcd and control plane. So I lump those two together. I don't separate out uh, etcd and control plane. You can, <laughs> but then you need three of those as well. So anyways, um, so, so my, my Kubernetes servers, uh, then for my user cluster are spread out, uh, uh, one of each on each of these servers. And then the same goes for my workers for that cluster. So I have one of each, uh, on each of those servers. And for some reason I have a fourth one. I, I have no idea why I created four, four nodes, uh, for my, my user, my user cluster, but I did. <laughs> I have no idea why. Uh, and I, th I think it was maybe just so in case I took everything down and then there were two left on one, I could still reboot one. I don't know why I would want to do that. Uh, but, but anyways, I do. And it, 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 it doesn't really matter. You can, you can create agents on the fly, uh, add more agents, take them away as, as much as you'd like to. Um, and, and so I can have as little as many as I want. So that's kind of how my, my, my Proxmox is arranged. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I wanted to kind of, you know, a lot of people have asked, you know, I, and I, I just talked about it, but a lot of people have asked like, you know, what does it look like? And so I, I gave you, you know, verbally what it looks like, but I'm, you know, I'm personally, I'm more of a visual person. So I, I kind of wanted to just kind of draw or map out, um, you know, what this looks like. Cause I wanted to share with it. I had people in discord say, what does your new cluster look like? And I typed it out. I'm like, you know, but, but where do things live? And I think, you know, it's, it's easier for me to make pictures about where things live, uh, rather than, you know, to talk about them. Cause it gets, it gets a little bit confusing. You know, I talked about that a little bit earlier. We talked about Helm and we talked about, we talked about Helm and we talked about, uh, well, any Helm install like a metal LB or any, you know, traffic install using Helm, it gets a little bit it gets a little bit confusing uh, on where those things live and so um, and, and how you deploy them. I talked a little bit about, you know, how you change your context. That's something you want to learn for sure. Absolutely. Uh, you want to learn how to change your context because you don't want to do the wrong thing to, you know, the, 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 you want to, don't want to, and this is confusing. You don't want to do the right thing to the wrong cluster. And so I would highly recommend if you do end up uh, uh, changing your kube config to always point at your user cluster. Why? Because you're most likely not going to do anything to that rancher cluster anymore once you create it. I mean, there might be few things, uh, but it's going to be the exception versus the rule. And so the rule in general for me uh, is I set my, in my kube config, I set my default context or my currently selected context to my user cluster. And so you, you'll, if not, you might end up deploying some stuff to it. Easy to roll back. But if you end up deleting stuff, that's, you know, destructive things are hard to, 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 to fix. I mean, sometimes it's easy with the manifest, but you know, if you, if you go and do a helm delete this, you know, deployment, eh, that might not be so good. So anyway, some people have asked, so I figured, you know, why not start like documenting kind of what my cluster looks like. And I, I'm, this is me just kind of spitballing. I don't know what shapes I should use. Um, I don't know why NVIDIA is coming up. Oh, I know why shortcut or NVIDIA. Um, oh, you stole my shortcut. Uh, and also I was using a Mac shortcut anyways. I'm so used to using my Mac during the day that I'm like doing Mac shortcuts now, which are obviously going to work. Um, but I wanted to kind of document it. And I want you to absolutely like, if you see holes in this cluster, I, I want to talk about it. I want to talk about like any, you know, deficiencies that you see. Um, and so I'm, I'm just going to put, I'm going to put some boxes here and then, and then we can, we can kind of react to it. I should probably copy these. All right. I'm not, not on a Mac. I'm on windows. So I can use the same thing. Do we, do we use boxes for servers? I think we should use boxes for servers. We don't have to. Oh, I'm, I'm going to get totally hung up on this. And I think, uh, Penguin Airlines the other day was, uh, maybe his last stream when I said, Hey, this is what my cluster looks like now. And I scribbled down on a piece of paper. I actually built what I scribbled down. Um, <laughs> you know, he was like, well, you know, scribbling it down is like, you know, almost, uh, almost like not having it at all. And I was like, Ooh, that, that, that's kind of, that's kind of tough. But, uh, I, uh, and uh, my response to him was always like, well, sometimes I get too lost in the tooling and how the tooling works that I, you know, I, I lose, uh, the intention of, of diagramming something, which is documenting something and getting these ideas out of my head. So anyways, um, so anyways, I'm, I'm, tr I'm going to try to ignore spaces and, and, and tooling stuff and just, just go forward. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to struggle with tools. Like, you know, tool, how you create a box and how you insert text is, does not help you, uh, get thoughts out of your head quick enough, at least for me.
So anyway, so yeah, like this. Like, how do I put a label? All right, I'm, I'm, all right Google. So we're going to go with you. We're going to do this. So anyways, um, I'm going to say, um, should, I, should I use my real server names? I kind of want to, and then maybe I'll, maybe I'll just, uh, maybe I'll just, yeah, I, I think I will use real server names, and then I'll just label them later. Uh, oh, talking, um, uh, creating a custom Windows ISO. Nice, like your videos. Thanks, thanks. Jaya, uh, cool, sounds fun. You could use draw.io. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I, I, I looked at Lucid Charts and I looked at draw.io. I, does draw.io auto correct stuff for you too? I think it does. Cause I think that's like a, almost like a machine learning type of uh, drawing tool. I think last time I looked at it, I don't, I don't remember. You could like draw something and it'll like create a banana for you or draw kind of a star and it'll create a really nice star for you. <laughs> I could play with that game all day. It's like it's like drawing with friends, except for drawing with this computer <laughs> by myself. Very weird, <laughs> but yeah, I should check it out. Um, uh, oh, talking about MS buying up everything. Have you ever thought about open source alternatives to Discord, like Zulip? Yeah, for your community. By the way, uh, uh, thy a lot for your hard. Oh, thanks a lot for your work, hard work. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, there's also Rocket Chat. Rocket Chat is another uh, popular one, like like Zulip. I think. I, you know, I thought about it. I, I thought about it. It's, um, you know, it, I thought about it. Uh, absolutely. And, um, you know, I, I <laughs> we've seen the history of Microsoft buying things. I mean, it doesn't mean that this is going to, you know, uh, go uh, away or whatever, like Skype and Yammer and all those other things. Who, who knows what's going to happen? Uh, you know, I, I think they want to roll it into their you know, into their gaming platform, into Xbox. And so they, you know, they're, they're, they're taking their gloves off, uh, against, uh, uh, Sony. And this is really a move against Sony. Uh, it, who knows? I mean, I'm sure, I mean, don't get me wrong. Great. Discord's a great product. Um, but I absolutely believe that, you know, probably Sony was kind of eyeing it too. And it's so do, do, do they buy this, you know, to prevent their competition from getting it? This is all speculation, but it, but it happens a lot. It happens a lot. I think that even happened with Skype. Someone else was super interested in buying it. And Microsoft's like, eh, there, you're a competition, so we're going to buy it. Not that it's not, not a great product, but anyways. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I still enjoy Discord. I mean, the, the, the jury's out on how it's going to change. It might not change at all. You know, I, uh, you know and uh, if, if Microsoft continues to, um, you know, use it primarily for gaming and gaming community and, and you know in just smaller niche communities in general not that gaming's niche but you know you can create a lot of communities on 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 discord and super niche ones like like ours um as long as the spirit of that is still there i i'm totally fine if i start like opening up you know outlook and outlook is prompting me to create a live you know clubhouse type stream in an outlook meeting that's when i'm like okay this has gone too far if there, if we ever catch wind of like Discord integration in Outlook, yeah, or LinkedIn, that's when you know things have gone too far. But you know, being a chat client that um, you know has you know a lot of great features, and there's a lot of members too. It's hard. It's hard to you know. It'd be hard to you know. It's it's hard enough now to, to convince someone to click on a Discord link. It means you got to have Discord. It means you got to be signed in. You know, it means all these things. You know, creating uh, then self-hosting a, a chat. Uh, client as as awesome as that sounds it's really hard i i feel like the adoption rate might be a lot lower i i i could i could try it i could try it absolutely absolutely um but yeah uh for linkedin yeah totally is the deal final i don't think so i i don't think so uh i i, I think it's been accepted or the offer or, you know but then fcc like everyone's got to get involved to make sure it's uh, you know and not perceived as a, a monopoly you know all, all the things that need to happen you know when when companies get bought, especially a big company like Microsoft buys something, you know, there's a lot of regulations in place. I, I don't fully understand it. Uh, it. It might take a while for that deal to go through. Who knows? I haven't been following it that closely other than I know they offered, they offered, uh, I don't know, nine, ten billion dollars And I think the offer has been accepted. I think, I don't know, maybe I'm, maybe not. Uh, I don't remember the last I read. Um, and I don't, I don't know what it means for discord. Um, so I, I hope discord continues to be discord, you know, and, and focusing on smaller niche communities. Cause you know, that's, that's where it's thriving. You know, it, it's not Slack, <laughs> you know, and if Microsoft picks it up and tries to turn it into Slack where it's like, Hey, I need 15,000 accounts to sign into Slack, you know, and I only get 10,000 messages in my private, you know, puts all those limitations and paywalls in front, you know, that's where we're going to see. We're going to see, you know, um, maybe something else come in, you know, and, you know, make way for something else to come in and, and grow and fill that gap. 
Um, you know, most of the time too, we, you know, for the most of the, most of my discord life, you know, and, and still for a good portion of people, discord's pretty much free. Uh, and sometimes that's a tactic of uh, a private company who wants to get acquired, <laughs> make everything free to grow your user base. Uh, so then you have a large user base and a large daily, weekly, monthly active users. So that when the person acquires you, <laughs> they'll want to pay $10 billion for it. But, you know, sometimes that's not sustainable. And so, you know, these are all things that like, you know, small companies, you know, uh, do and that when they get acquired, have to figure out or the larger company has to figure out when they get acquired, how they then kind of monetize this thing. And I hope it's I hope it's, you know, nothing more than what it is today. I'm sure there will be additional features, but who knows? I, I mean, I, I could I, you know, I don't mean to go on Discord forever, but, you know, I could kind of see the writing on the wall. How did I see the writing on the wall? You know, Microsoft has been doing a, a big partnership with Discord lately. You know, who else have they been doing a partnership with Spotify? I mean, who knows? I mean, my, my you know, I, I don't want to speculate, but, you know, if you, you know, got Xbox Live or, or vice versa, you got, you know, Discord uh, Nitro, you would get three months of, you know, Xbox or vice versa, you would get free Nitro tokens to spend for your community in Discord. So it's, uh, whenever you see partnerships like that, marketing campaigns that last a really long time that you know that's that's always kind of a a clue on who, who's teaming up uh <laughs> you know and they, they've they been doing the same thing with spotify i don't even know i mean spotify would probably be i don't know 100 billion dollars i have no clue but you know microsoft's done stuff with spotify for a long long time and um you know microsoft got out of the music game who knows what they're going to do in the future Anyways, I'm, I'm totally speculating on all kinds of stuff, but I, you know, I thought it was, you know, I, I mean, it was a good fit for Discord because, you know, they're, they're primarily, they, they house a lot of gaming, uh, a lot, a lot of gaming, uh, uh, um, communities. Um, but you know, that, I think that deal is still on, on, on Xbox. So I'm always, I, I always, you know, I, I always pay attention to those more than just like, oh, sweet, you know, nice. I get a couple months of Nitro or vice versa. I get a couple months of games with gold because of Discord Nitro. I'm always like, all right, and what's next? What's next? <laughs> um, uh, Reese, uh, Nitro is too expensive. In my opinion, I would buy it for five to seven dollars a month. Yeah, it is. It is kind of expensive, you know, and I've even looked at like, like, can I buy level two for my whole entire community? You know, I, I'd be willing to pay that. But then I was like, Oh my gosh, how many Nitro uh, d tokens do I need to buy? Five, six, and that's, you know, multiply that out. That's a little more expensive than I thought. And so, you know, I maybe with Microsoft, something like that will come. You know, maybe it's, hey, you know, uh, let's totally speculate, play this out. You know, Microsoft is, has a gaming streaming service. They already have games with gold or, or Xbox Live Gold. Now it's Xbox Network. Um, what are the things you get free from Xbox network? Uh, well, depending on if you're going to do, you know, the game streaming or you're just going to do the, you know, the, the, the gold, uh, you know, the gold membership, but I could see, you know, Xbox wants or Microsoft or Xbox wants people to subscribe and they want people to subscribe at higher tiers. And what do you get at higher tiers? You get more rewards. And so I could see discord nitro just being just a reward you get for, you know, for, for being, you know, a Microsoft uh, Xbox Live or Xbox Network member. I don't know what they're calling it now, but I, I get it. Um, so I, I can see this being a, another tier. And maybe if you're going to do, you know, the the unlimited gaming, you know, the game streaming um, uh, monthly, uh, which mine just ran out uh, last month in March. I had it for like a year and a half because I converted my gold to, uh, I forget what it's called. Uh, I converted it and I got like a year and a half of it. And I played probably five games. But I can see Microsoft just bundling this in again. So hopefully that's all it is. And hopefully it just means we get the same old Discord uh, with the same great features, maybe at a lower cost with some more features. But yeah, if we start to see LinkedIn integration or Yammer stuff or, <laughs> or Outlook meeting invites getting feathered in here, enough. <laughs> so yeah. Um, dude, apologize about that. Uh, dinner's ready. Catch everyone later on discord. Thank you so much. I apologize. My bot's not working right now. Um, I got to look at the time too. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to document this really quick. We're going to go through this really quick. Cause I could, I could talk about uh, disc spot, speculate about Microsoft and discord for a long time. Cause it's, it's fun. It's fun. So anyways, um, so here, here's my, here's my cluster now. Um, I'm going to just copy these out here. Okay. Oh yeah. I'm not on Mac. There we go. 
Okay, so this is my I'm gonna I'm gonna arrange these kind of uh, see I'm gonna get lost in the tooling. Um, I'm gonna arrange these a little bit nicer. So this is my first. I don't know what that thing is. What are you invisible thing text box? Oh, there's another one. See ya. Uh, I'm gonna put circles around these two. Um, can I zoom in and out of here? I can. Oh no. Oh no. I'm in Chrome, as you can or can't tell. Um, so this is my first cluster. I'm gonna, where's text? Text here is, this is my local cluster. Uh, local cluster. And I'll make this nicer before I share it out because a lot of people have asked like, hey, can you, can you document this somewhere? I'm gonna put it here for now. This is my local cluster. And what's running in my local cluster? Well, it's pretty much rancher only. So this is my management cluster. So think this is my cluster that manages the rest of my clusters that I added. So it's rancher only. Here, let's let's not use two text boxes. Let's do one. Uh, local cluster. Sorry, my mic's right here. Uh, rancher only. Um, it's uh, K3S. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Bullet points. Why not? Let's, let's go for it. Uh, local cluster. Loca. Living la vida. Loca cluster. Okay. Uh, local cluster. Rancher only. Uh, K3S. And uh, there's a couple other things I installed here. So I'm running Metal LB here. I'm actually running Metal LB in two places, but I'm running at Metal LB here on this cluster. Um, oh, thanks for refunding. PC Geek, thank you, dude. You can refund points. Thank you so much. That was something I was going to look into. I appreciate it. Oh, thanks, man. Thank you. I didn't know that that was a thing, and you already figured out it was a thing and, and, and fixed it. So I appreciate it. Thanks, dude. Appreciate it. Um, Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much. Huh. Um, I didn't know that either. Thanks, man. Piece of geek. He's on it. He has, he has all the answers. If you, if you ever in our Discord, he's all the answers and always has such a positive attitude. It's, it's you know, so helpful. Uh, <laughs> the mods can do that. Thank you so much. Uh, Kaluium. Uh, Kalu, I, I apologize. Hey, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. And if I don't call out follows, I'll try to at some point. I just have a little bit, you know, I muted some stuff. Uh, just a little bit so I can, you know, talk about this, uh, but I'll, I'll call them out too. Um, so my local cluster, rancher only, it's running K3S and it's running Metal LB. So the reason why I installed Metal LB here also is because I want to be able to expose, here, let's go another bullet point, expose rancher to Metal LB. Uh, and so Metal LB, if you're not familiar with it, it's a, it's a load balancer that actually runs inside of Kubernetes. And it's really cool because it has like, it has this speaker uh, speaker service that talks to all of these uh, agents uh, or nodes that run on every, every node within here, um, all of the agents, and can be a, be a load balancer within Kubernetes. And, it, and it's, so, it, it's so cool because, you know, if, if Metal LB dies on this one, it can run here, it can run here, it can run here. So it's, it's really cool. So anyways, I use Metal LB in my local cluster just to expose uh, my Rancher UI. And that was purposeful um, because I wanted to. <laughs> but then I have, uh, so I'm gonna copy this. Uh, let me, let me here, we're, we're gonna, at CD, I'm just gonna, uh, oh no, I'll put this here. Ranch only, K3S, at CD, at CD. Uh, middle lobby and then so these are my servers oh, i'm not on a mac stop stop hitting mac stuff oh yeah i can put labels in here all right and these are my agents these are my agents all right so these are my agents getting better at this and this is my local cluster all right and then so it, probably not important but all of these nodes uh, all of these nodes can do, uh, are running on Ubuntu. It doesn't matter, any OS you want it to. Uh, can't Nginx do that? Yeah, Nginx can be, uh, can do load balancing too, uh, but you know, you'd have to make it HA. And so Metal LB, the way it kind of works is that Metal LB service can run on any one of these agents. So you kind of get HA just by installing it within your Kubernetes cluster. And, and so really, so, and, and so really, um, Metal LB high level, I'll put it here too, in case you in case you don't know. Um, uh, it's a load balancer, and it's really uh, the the most practical way I can think about it. If I can click on the right thing, balancer, bal balancer, balancer, roads, um, is that um, 
it's the way you get into your Kubernetes cluster. So, um, so I, I know you can use host port, node port, you can expose a port on every node or expose a port directly from your cluster. Um, but what Metal LB does is actually creates a, a, an endpoint uh, within a, 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 a bound to an IP within you know, that, that range that it's in. And that's how you get in and out of, of, of Kubernetes. Uh, not how you get out necessarily, but how you can get into your cluster. I won't go into too much detail because you know I have traffic helps with some of that too. Um, prefer layer three IP over layer two ethernet uh, mode when possible. Yeah, yeah, awesome, yeah. Uh, do you use load balancer pi hole with metal LB? Uh, love it for HA. Um, do I use it? I, I don't. Um, I don't. Uh, so I, I temporarily move pi hole out of Kubernetes and it's running on a virtual machine only. And that was part of redoing my whole entire infrastructure because I needed DNS there before I needed Kubernetes. And then, so I haven't moved it back yet. And I started thinking like, you know, uh, DNS is pretty critical. I, I would love for it to go back in there, um, at some point, but if that ever goes down, or my cluster ever goes down, then my DNS also goes down. And then it, it's like the chicken or the egg deal. Like, you know, some of my, uh, all of these nodes refer to each other by DNS name. So I have DNS everywhere now. Uh, I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, but I, I use, you know, C names and uh, DNS entries. So uh, A records everywhere. Um, and so if DNS ever goes down, then even these nodes, uh, all of Kubernetes will totally collapse because <laughs> I'm not doing it by IP address. Uh, and that was purposeful because I, you know, I, I wanted to be a little bit uh, more flexible uh, with stuff. Uh, nice haircut, looking fresh. Thanks. Yeah, just my wife just did it this morning. <laughs> I have some other DNS. I have some DNS stuff in my Etsy host. Yeah, good. good. I should do that too. Uh, that's what happened to me. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I mean, it may go back into Kubernetes at at some point, but for now, it's it's in a virtual machine. And then I use Gravity Sync to sync the two. And so I, I technically don't have you know HA Pi Hole. I have primary and secondary, but they're in sync. Um, and so so this is my local cluster only running rancher, but yeah, all great questions, all great questions. There is one consideration though. And so there, there's one thing um, that um, just because I have HA database availability with that CD, um, there's still something that happens in here that is maybe not as clear, is that you need a load balancer still here. The heck do you need a load balancer for? Well, you do need one. Uh, can I draw? Can I, is this, this is text, this is a shape. Uh, <laughs> Just thinking out loud. Uh, so you you still have a load balancer here, LB. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, vertical LB, why not? And so this load balancer here um, is really, uh, no, this goes here. Let me let me redesign this a little bit. I'm basically remaking the same the same uh, <laughs> diagram that Rancher already has, but I, I think it's important to know is that this load balancer here uh, still needs to exist because this load balancer is how you communicate with these servers over kube control. And so, um, so uh, that's something that I don't have HA yet. I'm gonna work on it. And so I'll probably use, um, you know, keep alive D to keep up a load balancer point all of, and then I'll get a, so if I use keep alive D, you know, I'll end up having two low, two, two Nginx, you know, uh, load balancers with a VIP. I'm not going to draw it all. And then that VIP will be exposed. Uh, and then all of these servers, uh, my key 3s servers will actually be able to, to, to communicate with it, uh, on either IP. And so that's something I'm going to end up doing. Um, but what does that help with that? Just makes sure that, you know, your kube control commands, the thing you hit with kube control is also HA. And so it's pretty important. I mean, pretty important for you as a Kubernetes operator to be able to issue kube control commands. And if this load balancer is down, uh, you have a VIP or you have a you know a, a, an IP that uh, is actually floating um, between two real physical um, or two real load balancers to still be able to communicate with your K3S K3S uh, service. Kubevip, keep live D. Yeah, Adrian Goins. Yeah, absolutely. I saw that too. I saw it too. Uh, and it's super interesting. Uh, you know, I, I'm on the fence yet. Do I, do I, do I do a traditional? Yeah, absolutely. Adrian Goins. Yeah. Awesome. He has, he's, I think he works for Rancher. I think Rancher, you know, he works for Rancher. So he's got a, he has a wealth of knowledge in this stuff. And so, yeah, I'd love to pick his brain sometime. He asked me if we wanted to do something together sometime. We might, I don't know. 
jury's still out. Um, but he, um, he, in his latest video about his etcd cluster, he does talk about um, using kubevip, which then basically puts the floating virtual IP within your cluster and exposes a VIP to you, uh, virtual IP, um, that's highly available. Uh, just And it's just part of Kubernetes, which is super, super interesting. Um, and I, I think in the first pass, uh, I might do that. I think he ran into some bugs or had some problems or there's a problem with one of the repo of a kubevip he was using. Um, in the meantime, I might just spin up another Nginx load balancer, uh, use keep alive D and put my, you know, have my, my VIP uh, be right here. Uh, oh, we'll go, yeah, sure, square. Uh, basically, VIP here, uh, VIP that these all communicate with, which behind the scenes, now I'm, now I'm like forecasting what my, what my uh, future infrastructure might look like. Uh, but, the, but the nice part about it, if you do this, then, you know, these servers and you communicate with this. I mean, technically, this is kind of like this. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, but kube control commands go to the VIP, which could go to either load balancer, depending on if it's up or down, if you use keep alive D or a kube VIP. Um, and then you'll be able to communicate with the servers. And so, and then also these servers are able to, uh, you know, this load balancer knows if any, any of these servers are up or down, so it can take it in and out of that pool and not send traffic to those, to those devices. Anyways, yeah, that's TBD. I, I'd, I'd love to do that at some point. Uh, and I, I think I might at some point. Uh, haven't done it yet. So, yeah, that's a, that's a good point. So poking a hole right there, you know, my LB isn't HA yet. Um, and so these 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 are, these are, my services are, uh, mid LB, yeah, pretty much is. And so then I have, you know, this is where Rancher is going to run. Uh, no cheap LB in this market. Uh, I pie hole running in LXC. Could start up another one and bundle them up, HA, like you did uh, in Rancher a while ago. I have pie hole running in LXC. Could I start up another one and bundle them up? For you? Yeah. Um, could you start? Yeah. So you can have a mixed um, topology of pie hole. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you're going to use something like Gravity Sync. So, so let's... Uh, so can you have multiple Pi-hole servers running on different infrastructure? Absolutely you can. You can have one that's running in Docker, one that's running in Kubernetes, one that's on a physical Raspberry Pi. Yeah, so they end up, you know, as long as, you know, your clients are going to look to them for DNS requests, yeah, absolutely you can. How do you keep it in sync? That's a little bit harder. Um, there's this thing called Gravity Sync that you can use. It's an awesome open source project um, that you can use to synchronize um, synchronize uh, those uh, two servers. So they're uh, all of their uh, your your block list as well as your um, your block list as well as your C names and your your local DNS records, your A records uh, can be synchronized that way. And you can have you know mixed mode. Uh, one can be physical, one can be containerized, one can be in Kubernetes. There are some requirements though. If you do containerize it, I think there there's some script that has to run on the host. So if you're going to do it in Kubernetes, I think that script that has to run on the host has to be on every node that you know Pihole could possibly run on. But yeah. Yeah, and absolutely. You can use Keep Alive D like uh, PC Geek mentions, um, and you know, point to a, a VIP with Keep Alive D. Same same thing here. Point to a VIP, and then it'll just figure it out for you. You know, if if that one's down, it'll take it out of that pool of IPs, uh, and then send it only to the ones that are live. Yeah, and so that's what I think I'm doing right here with my my cool, my uh, load balancer for sure. Um, but yeah, and then keep them in sync with Gravity Sync. Absolutely. Um, and then I think for here, you know, I basically have this twice. Uh, and so this is my user cluster here. User cluster. Oh, uh, what do I have here? Uh, my workloads. I'm going to say my, cause it makes it sound more personal. Uh, and so we know I'm not going to put rancher in there, but my workloads only. This is not running on K3S. So my second my second, uh, my second cluster is not running K3S. So this is what you saw there. It's a rancher provisioned, rancher provisioned, provisioned uh, cluster. And that's what we saw earlier. So this was actually when you go into add a new cluster, create a custom cluster, and then from that custom cluster, it'll generate Docker commands for you. And those Docker commands can then, um, those Docker commands uh, can then uh, spin up 
uh, the server or the agents of those types for you and join your cluster. So that's what I ended up doing uh, because it's, it's one, it is easy to do. And two, a lot of people do it that way. So I figured, why not? There's a third reason why I did it that way too, is because Rancher has more support for, for uh, uh, clusters that were provisioned with Rancher. So there's this tiered matrix that they have of features that work from Rancher on clusters. And so you get a handful of, you get a handful of features if you just go and port a K3S clusters. You get, a lot of, you get a lot of stuff. And so I'm not downplaying what, what it can and can't do. You get a lot of stuff. But if you actually, you know, then import, I think an RKE cluster and a, you know, one that was generated with Rancher in the past, you get a lot more. But if you do it using, you know, their tooling, you actually get a lot of features for a backup, for security scanning, for logging and a lot of things. So that's what I ended up doing. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Th dude, thank you. Thank you, uh, PC Geek. Uh, and so that's what I ended up doing. Uh, Farhan, uh, RKE, yes. So this is actually RKE. I think that's how they, that, what they spin up. Uh, I'll, I'll look into it, but I think it is an RKE cluster. And then so now when you spin up this new cluster, um, you know, you're going to need the same types of things. So you're going to need servers that run. And when I say servers, I'm lumping those two roles, control plane and etcd into one. Um, but your, your servers are going to be running control plane and etcd, no user workloads. And then your agents are going to be running only user workloads. And so you need that same thing. You need that same thing twice. And so this is a big reason why I, I, I haven't done this in the past is because I'm like, man, that's a whole lot of resources, you know? That's a whole lot of resources for this, you know? Ain't nobody got time for that, <laughs> you know? And um, when I created my new one, I figured, you know what, I, I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna delete this load balancer for now because it looks awkward as if it really means something. Um, so yeah, it's a whole lot of resources and I thought the same thing, but I thought, well, you know what, if I'm gonna do it this time, I'm gonna do it that way because when people ask me the question, then I can say, yeah, I've done it. Here's, here's how it works. Um, so this rancher provision cluster, now this is where it gets kind of interesting uh, because I also install Metal LB here. And why do I install Metal LB here for is because I want incoming traffic into this cluster. You know, I want a load balancer for my cluster. And I said this a few times and maybe I didn't make it clear, uh, but, but Metal LB is basically a software version of a cloud load balancer that Kubernetes expects to be there right and so when you think of uh cloud load balancers they're you know they're 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 load balancers that are provided by cloud providers so you know azure uh you name it azure aws gcp linode whoever um they're all there uh and, and they're and they're usually big expensive things and you rent them out and you pay for ips and stuff like that well metal lb acts like one of those a software version of one of those in your home or in your in your i should say in your you know on-prem or it doesn't even have to be on-prem on your self-provisioned kubernetes cluster that's not in a cloud provider could be hosted in a cloud provider it gets confusing uh, but anyways this acts like that and so Metal LB, I actually do install here because why? Because I want to expose traffic. Uh, tra the the <laughs> traffic. I don't even know how to spell traffic anymore uh, because I've been spelling traffic the other way, the product name. But I want to expose traffic. A fic. I think I spelled that right. <laughs> expose traffic, um, which is also living in here too. I should I should draw some more boxes here too. Um, but traffic actually, then I can expose, this is what layer seven, L7 load balancer. Uh, I, I should just put reverse proxy. So it doesn't get confusing. It can do more than that. I only use it for a reverse proxy. Uh, but I ended up putting metal LB there too. And I put in traffic there too. And so I can have my reverse proxy there so that I can expose these, these workloads uh, to the public or even internally, even internally here. Uh, and I get SSL there. So I'm, I'm going to draw a box because I, th I think that's kind of an important takeaway here. I should probably write, draw two boxes. I'm going to draw them here. So I have metal LB here. Metal LB. I'm bad at, I'm bad at boxes. There we go. Metal LB. I wish this was bigger. I, I should probably make this drawing board or whatever it's called bigger. Put it there. Metal LB. 
And then here I then also have traffic to. So I'm, I'm gonna draw another box here, traffic. Um, and so that's my reverse proxy. And so here uh, I'm gonna expose, uh, I'm gonna put an IP here. So I'm gonna just say 192, that 168, whatever you want it to be, uh, 168 dot whatever, two, whatever. Uh, I wanted to make it look like it's not, it's important. So I won't put 100, whatever, whatever your IP is here. But this needs to be on the same, you know, subnet as everything else. And so what, 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 this ha what happens here is, is really cool. So if you haven't used it, you know, um, you have incoming requests that come in uh, to this 192, 168, oh, if I could, oh, if I could type, whatever, 40.230. I want it to look a little more important than <laughs> default IP that something gets. Uh, anyways, so the cool thing is you have incoming traffic here. So let's say you have a request for example, ah, oh, can I, can I type today? Um, example.com. So example.com, uh, comes in here, uh, middle of B says, Hey, you know, you're, you're, um, uh, this is basically a, a load balancer. Um, and so uh, yep, I can, I can forward that on, uh, traffic then basically says, Hey, I'm looking, uh, I will look up example.com. Um, let me see. If I, if I can hit the right buttons, I just want to click. There we go. I can, uh, I, I know example.com. Example.com uh, resolves to one of these, these uh, 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 pods in here. And then example.com, uh, let's say, runs in one of these agents uh, with a web server that's running in here. So this is also going to do SSL here too. SSL. SSL. So this has Let's Encrypt. Because a lot of people are like, yeah, I use Nginx and Let's Encrypt. Yeah, same, same idea, same idea. Different product, same idea. Same capability. So Let's Encrypt. And uh, Let's Encrypt uh, is running here uh, with CertBot and Reverse Proxy. I'll, I'll put them all in here. Proxy. And it can do a bunch of other things too. It can do a bunch of other things too. Uh, why not a Kubernetes Ingress? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Not sure. <laughs> I, I don't know, Jerry Bohr. Um, I, you know, I, I, this is kind of the infrastructure that I settled on. Um, you know, I, I use, I use metal LB because, um, uh, one, it's easy. And two, I, I need a load balancer somewhere to get traffic within my, my Kubernetes cluster. Um, and you know, and then from there I need, I, I mean, I could, you could use any, uh, ingress controller you want here. I, I use traffic. So yeah, it, it, totally good. Uh, you totally could. Uh, but, but traffic becomes your, you know, traffic is an ingress too. Um, why not everything on Amazon? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> yeah. I want to pay Amazon. Uh, not really to run all this. Uh, no way. Uh, but yeah, if, for sure. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's a good question. Uh, I mean, I've chosen, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, thank you. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. Not like this for sure. Um, so yeah, this is, this is kind of how it's designed and this is how a lot of my videos talk. And this is how, this is where traffic plays really well. So this can be in Nginx ingress. It can be anything you want. It can be anything you want for sure. Uh, but, uh, but I, I've settled on traffic cause it, it ends up being super duper easy to do. And, uh, you know, I, I run Nginx a lot of other places. And when I was looking for, you know, my ingress, I thought, Hey, let's, let's go with, let's go with something that seems new and easier to use. Um, Windor, how many servers will be involved? Well, if you look at all these boxes, these are all servers. So these are all Kubernetes nodes. And so when I when I when you hear node in general, you could just think server, one to one server. And so how many nodes do I have? Well, I I have two clusters, right? I'm gonna draw like a whole bunch of all kinds of stuff now, and I'll, I'll fix this up later. Can I can I box this up into one? Oh, killing me. Whatever, Google. Um, here I can do a line. There. How do you like that? I'll, I'll fix this all up later. So how many servers do I have? Well, I have two clusters. Um, and each one of these boxes are a server. So I have, you know, six servers uh, per, per cluster. And that's because these have different roles. And because I've separated all the roles, 
uh, except for a control plane. Control plane and etcd are running on the on the same server because I, I I don't see any need for me to separate those out. Huge, maybe if you're running a gigantic cluster, uh, maybe that will work for you. Um, but six, so I have twelve. I have twelve dedicated to it. I actually have thirteen. I, I have an odd number. Uh, because for some reason I decided to add another agent. And I think that was because of my old infrastructure I already had one. So I'm like, Hey, he's already provisioned here. He has IP DNS entries. He has everything he needs. Why not? Let's, let's go for broke. Uh, is it required? No, it's not. Um, so yeah. Uh, but you could do this with much, much less, much less. I, like I said, like my, my entire cluster was this, the, the bottom half for a long time. Uh, you know, and I ran, I ran Rancher and Kubernetes and all my, so I ran my Rancher workloads and my user workloads in the same spot. And you could, arguably, you could still do that. There, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Rancher will tell you not to, and I, I will tell you it works fine. <laughs> Should probably listen to them instead of me. But it, you know, I, I, I understand why they say you don't. Um, you know, I, I, I totally get it. And there are, there are a few, you know. There are a few uh, uh, things that you run into if you run it that way, uh, because there are some things with their their load balancer that you'll run into, and it's not problems. You'll just notice a blips every now and then uh, if a rancher uh, server goes down or pod moves or whatever the case may be. Your load balance or your ingress your ingress will blip for just a minute, and uh, so will some of your services that are connected to that same. Uh, ingress. So it, it's not a huge deal, uh, but I have seen why they say you're not going to. Um, let's see. Uh, sounds good. Uh, dumb roll. Uh, I got to get this name. Dumb roll deli. Uh, have I tried Ansible? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I run Ansible. Yep. I have. And so, uh, I did, did I create playbooks to provision all of this? No, no, but I have playbooks for my K3S agents. Um, certain things I need to do and certain things I need to, uh, maintenance types things. Um, and I have playbooks for, uh, virtual guests for Pro Proxmox. So I have a lot of different playbooks, but I didn't provision all of this. No, no way. I use, yeah, I went, I went semi old school Proxmox, uh, templates, clones, and, you know, and, uh, uh, then I ran Ansible after that. So, so my, my, I don't run Ansible against, uh, my Proxmox server to actually provision the node. But my templates, and when I clone them, as soon as they're up and going, then I have playbooks on how to make them, you know, uh, 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 a node for a Kubernetes server. So everything from SSH keys to updates to additional libraries or packages that I need to install, uh, the whole nine yards. So yeah, I, I have I have everything but the actual cloning uh, uh, working, uh, except for Proxmox. I'm sad you're not using Nextcloud for this diagram. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. I should be dog fooding my own stuff, right? I, I just, I, you know, I, my bot's not working today, and it's like, okay, is my my Nextcloud not going to work today? <laughs> yeah, totally. Call me out on that stuff. I should be dog fooding my own stuff, right? <laughs> uh, just call me Barack. Barack. Yeah, yeah, that is easier. Barack. I, I will remember that. It seems powerful. All right. Uh, yeah, it, it is powerful. And so, and so a lot of, a lot of these, um, so, uh, so your powerful comment about, was about Ansible. Yeah, absolutely. It is powerful. Uh, and I have a lot of my playbooks, I guess I haven't contributed them to them much. A lot of my playbooks are, are, um, in my GitHub repo too. You can, you feel free to pull them down and add to them. Uh, I need to add to them too. Cause I, I've, I've, they've evolved and I haven't keep kept the ones I have in GitHub up to date. I probably should. Um, Dinner was delicious. Now I'm back. All right, I loot. Yeah, you're, you're making me hungry. Um, yeah, and so uh, speaking of yeah, speaking of getting hungry, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of getting hungry. But um, uh, so yeah, this is kind of you know I, I I know I probably could have explained this in some other diagram, but I figured we would you know kind of talk about it and talk about why. Um, and then, so if someone, you know, has questions, you know, I can refer them back to this better looking diagram that I will create here soon. Um, and then I will also create, uh, the same, the same, uh, 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 commands that I use to spin up all these clusters. If you're in discord, you can already kind of find them. I think, uh, I think John in, in discord asked for them. And so I, I, I supplied them. Uh, but I will, I will also, uh, make better versions of that available. I think I'm going to sneeze. Maybe no. Okay. Ooh. 
All right. Thought it wasn't, then it was, then it wasn't, then it was, but I did. Um, so anyways, yeah, like, uh, I'll absolutely share this out. Um, I'll absolutely share this out and, and make sure it gets into your hands and, and maybe I'll do something a little more formal too, to put it together, to kind of talk about some of these things. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'll edit the pod. Who knows? Um, I will say though, that, um, uh, if, if you're interested in this, uh, this is, this is kind of my outro. Cause I, I do have to wrap things up because I did promise uh, my wife, I would be done in about four minutes, uh, because we have somewhere to be. Um, so I, I do have to wrap things up. I just want to say absolutely. If you're interested in, in any of this and you haven't had, um, and, and you're not a member of a Discord community. We talked a lot about Discord. Hopefully, Microsoft doesn't destroy it. If they do, we'll go somewhere else, right? Uh, if you're not a member of the Discord uh, community, I absolutely encourage you to join. Um, I can't run the Discord command now, but if you look down below, there's a big Discord link. Uh, you can absolutely click on that button and join our community. There's a lot of people that are uh, in our community that talk about a lot of this stuff, and it's not all Kubernetes. So if you're like, ah, oh, this guy's talking about Kubernetes. He talks about Kubernetes way too much. It's not all about Kubernetes. It's a, there's there's a lot of hardware. There's a lot of services. There's a lot of different things in there. So I absolutely encourage you to join if you're interested. Um, and also, I just want to say, yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Thanks so much for, for coming out and for, for, for being here, uh, chatting, poking holes in my diagram, asking lots of great questions. Not a lot of tough questions. I'm glad there weren't any tough questions. Like, why the heck did you do that? Like, have you ever run Kubernetes before? I was expecting some of those. I knew you weren't going to do it, but absolutely. Um, I knew you weren't going to do that because you guys are you guys are nice. You guys are way good. Um, and so there were a lot of follows, uh, a lot of subs and resubs and bits. So I greatly appreciate that. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and if you have any additional questions, uh, ping me in Discord or ping me in Twitter. Um, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Have a great Saturday. Sorry I'm cutting it a little bit short. I, I have... I have one minute and 30 seconds. Uh, and then my to-dos. I have to-dos. So uh, I got to update some stuff in GitHub. PC Geek, thank you so much for fixing the points. I don't have to do that. Um, and then make a better diagram. That's shareable along with the command. So I appreciate it. Yeah, PC Geek found the, found the link. Thank you so much. But yeah, guys, uh, have a great Saturday. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I will be back next Saturday. I'm going to have something coming for you soon. Someone asked about, hey, can you tell me about how you do this? Well, that video is coming soon too. So I, I mean, I'll just put it out there. Monitoring and alerting for Kubernetes, uh, the whole nine yards coming soon. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks thanks so much. <laughs> Listen to your wife. I, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm like blabbing away and I, I actually have a minute and five seconds. So I'm, I'm, I'm ahead of time. Thanks so much. Uh, have a great weekend and uh, be good to each other. Take care, folks. See ya.